What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you guys nine different ways that you can use math when you're drawing. Now let me tell you something. So as a college student you're going to be working towards a major. In this case my major is art and when you're in college they mandate you to take some of these classes that you may think don't lead to your major. Like me as an art major I'm taking a biology class which of course is an elective and it's not towards my major. But I would imagine being put in at least more than one math class because throughout my years of college I've only taken one math class. Even though I haven't been put in many math classes throughout my years of college, I still utilize some math concepts that help me draw, paint, make videos, whatever. And that's what I'm gonna present to you today. So let's get started. To start things off, I do use division. I use it for when I'm drawing and I'm trying to break a shape into a specific amount of pieces. Like if I wanna split it into halves, thirds, quarters, fifths, and so on. That's what I use division for. For example, in my how to draw stairs video, I take a shape and I divide it into nine equal squares. And by dividing that shape into nine equal squares, it helps me draw even sized stairs. And it makes it even easier because I was drawing it in perspective. But to be more elaborate, I took the length of that shape, divided it into three, and I took the width of that shape and I also divided it into three. And that made nine equal squares. Here's another example of me using division for my art. I use division when making a swatch chart because I want something that I can like slip into my notebook and put in these uh, super cool paper protectors. So it's eight and a half by 11 and I use it for swatching my markers, my paint pens or whatever, whatever the case may be. But if they're markers or colored pencils or whatever, I like to break it into color sections. So as you can see, I have nine different color selections. I got pink, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, brown, and gray. So that's nine different sections I can make onto an 11 inch piece of paper, which I did evenly. So all I had to do was take 11 divided by nine and whatever that number was i just measured down which looks like it's close to one and a quarter but whatever number i got i broke it all up into equal sections so that way it's all equal another math concept that i use is called trigonometry that's the study of triangles so i know the different kinds of triangles which are scalene isosceles equilateral right and whatever else there may be more names for triangles out there but those are just a few that I use for when I'm drawing because usually I start off with basic shapes when I'm drawing and I want to say we're going to start off with like let's say a right triangle so there's going to be a triangle with a right angle on it so that's where we're going to start off with or maybe we're going to start off with an isosceles triangle a triangle with two sides that are the same and one's different but most of the time I do use equilateral triangles and I'm pretty sure we all know what an equilateral triangle is so there's no need to explain it another concept that I use are patterns. So I use patterns a lot when I'm drawing clothing. Like say if I'm drawing like a plaid pattern, I wanna go maybe thick line, thin line, thick line, thin line. Or maybe a pattern of spots. Big spot, little spot, big spot, little spot. So here's an example of me using patterns for a class project. I had to take like a letter face, a typeface or whatever, and I had to make that into a pattern or tessellation, something that continues over and over. I don't often use typefaces to make patterns in my art, but I figured that would be a better example for what I'm explaining. Another concept I use are parallel and perpendicular lines. Now the word parallel I use a lot because we see parallel lines pretty much everywhere. And in my case, since I'm making videos here, it's easy to explain what I'm doing. So if I'm saying, let's start out with two or three parallel lines, you would know that we're starting out with three lines that all look the same, basically because they're parallel. Perpendicular lines, however, intersect at a 90 degree angle, which is also not hard to come by. It's basically the letter L. Like if you look around the room that you're in right now, you'll find a letter L or a set of perpendicular lines. And again, it makes it easy to explain what I'm doing, what I'm starting out with, or how to go about things, you know, whatever the case may be. Another concept I use are transformations. You know when some shapes differentiate along the X or Y axis on a coordinate grid. Sometimes shapes can reflect, sometimes they can be dilated, sometimes they can be rotated, and sometimes they can be translated. And I use this concept not just on shapes, but I also use it on my drawings. So a recent drawing that I made here, I provided a reflection of my image and I used it to put it inside of a mirror. That's called a reflection. Like, no brainer on that one. But that initial shape can be dilated, it can be translated, or it can be rotated. So oftentimes you may hear me say altering the shape. 
What I mean by that is you can also change the size of the shape or you can change the rotation of it and also making that into a pattern so that it looks more promising. And also when I'm providing these transformations to these shapes or pictures in my drawings, I don't really use a coordinate grid or whatever, but I will often use a center line which can pose as an X or Y axis, but that's just something to think about. My next concept is my most used concept of all and it's symmetry. This kind of ties into what I mentioned earlier with the uh, transformation. Symmetry is basically a shape that's looking the same on both sides. But on both sides of the line of symmetry, they're both reflected. You know what I'm saying? But I use symmetry a lot when I'm drawing faces. So like if I'm giving a face tutorial or whatever, how to draw the face or anything else of that matter, I start out with a circle for the face, the skull. And then if I'm drawing it at a front view, I make sure that that line of symmetry is in the middle. So that way I don't misplace the eyes or the nose or the mouth on the face. Oftentimes I'll use the word asymmetrical, which means I don't want it to be the same on both sides. So sometimes I want to give my drawings sort of a dynamic look, depending on what the drawing is. I don't want it to be the same on both sides. I want it to be asymmetrical. You know, because if I say the word symmetrical a lot, I'll say asymmetrical if I really mean it. My next concept is multiplication. Multiplication is a concept that I use a lot, but not just in art, but in everyday life. A lot of people watching this video can agree, but mainly when I'm using multiplication, I use it for conversion. Let's say I'm given a project to work on and I'm mandated to have it at a specific size, but I'm given it in centimeters, but I'm more comfortable working in inches. So what I'm gonna have to do is I gotta multiply a certain number to the centimeters to get inches or vice versa. That's what a conversion is. But here's a page from my book that I published a couple years ago and it's got a metric conversion chart in it which tells you how to convert one unit of measurement to another. All you gotta do is multiply such and such to get what you need. And this concept ties into my next concept which is calculating and comparing sales prices on some art supplies. Like for example, in my Ahuhu versus Copic video, I show you guys the prices that I paid for each set of markers. Now let's say you wanna buy a 24 set of store brand markers and you have Michaels and Hobby Lobby. And I did some research so I can help you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. You can obviously see which one is greater than or less than, but if you're also shopping, you also gotta consider the sales that are going on. So one store may have it for 40% off, another store may have it for 50% off. So let's say the store with the higher priced markers have it for 50% off and the store with the lower price markers have it for 40. And I always use this concept to figure out where I should buy my supplies from so I can get a better deal. So depending on whatever the case may be to get the exact price, there is some math that needs to be done. My last concept refers to identifying 2D and 3D shapes. We all know 3D shapes like a cube, a cone, a pyramid, cylinder, sphere, rectangular prism, triangular prism, and whatever else, those are all 3D shapes. But let's take a look at my how to draw in one point perspective video. In this video, I draw an assortment of 2D shapes, which I then transform into 3D forms. And if you're in like a drawing class, you may hear the words shape and form a whole lot. But a big difference between the two is that a shape is a defined area that's flat. A form is like a shape, but it has some depth. I like to look at a form as a shape that has a length, a width, and a height. But to make it easy, if you can tell whether or not a shape is flat, then you understand this concept perfectly. But to conclude the video, don't underestimate, don't estimate. Don't look at math as a silly concept that they teach you in school. It can really help you out in life in more ways than I listened to you today. But that's gonna do it for the video. If you liked it, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I